group hasn't prepared as a group there is no presentation uh, then you can proceed with your report um we didn't prepare a presentation yeah, yeah go on then and if anyone needs their their machine to be up so that they can present let me know and i can also uh, switch on the machine Mm, okay. okay but you can proceed uh, with uh can you see my screen i, I don't know why is it not active yeah, can not you see my screen no if it's a link you can you can share it and then i will share it if it's a published one uh it's on i don't know mm, let me say do the google Talk, I guess. Uh, Google Drive. Okay. Uh, final week eight. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I send the link for the Google Drive. Why is it not sharing? I don't know. Yeah, uh, so the, the the first section is just explaining the business need. And that, that one is, uh, I think, task one, uh, a review of the uh, documents that we got that was submitted in the interim, uh, during the interim submission. Uh, you can go down. Uh, all the way down. Yeah. Which section? Yes, you can. You can. Yeah, I can start from there. So uh, after doing those uh, research and experimentations, uh, we uh, agreed upon to, uh, yeah, uh, to use uh, the Lama two. Uh, Amharic model from Gari, and uh, to do that, we divide our tasks into data pre processing, a model fine tuning, rack pipeline development, and the uh, UI design and implementation. So, um, I have worked on I think here and there uh, the data processing and the model fine tuning. Uh, during the uh, data pre-processing, uh, we kind of used the NAFNILES code and we add our own to compile all the data at once. Uh, but later for the fine tuning, since we need uh, the label data, uh, at the first we didn't realize that uh, it was kind of classification uh, problem and for that we kind of needed evenly distributed ads and not then ads data that's why we weren't get um, a good accuracy so later uh, after realizing that we have to make the, the data evenly distributed so we uh, try to extract uh, ads and then ads evenly and we use that for the uh, fine tuning. Uh, so during the fine tuning, there are some steps, starting from installing the important uh, or in necessary modules, and then um, model configuration. That means we need to load the Lama2 and the Lama2 Amharic or Garish model. Uh, we put it uh, in a common uh, folder 
and from there we uh, we try to use uh, or configure the four bit quantization that was important for the RAM, I guess, because it was giving us uh, a memory issue. So uh, for that, we created uh, the quantization. So that's that's the the, uh, the fifth config. You can scroll up a little bit. Yeah, and then we uh, there we load the uh, pre-trained model in the tokenizer. Uh, I think there's no line number, but yeah, the, the model in the tokenizer are from Lama 2 in the uh, from Garis model. And from the next one was to set up the fifth parameters uh, for fine tuning. So we use the uh, LoRa, uh, as I said earlier. And the next is, or the final that I thought is the, the fine tuning. Uh, we try to uh, use the supervised fine tuning. That's the S SFTR something, but that was for that they said that can't be used for classification at the moment. So we use the the trainer. Um, it, there, there is a call for that trainer that I didn't include. So that's where the fine tuning uh, ends. So the the progress we were able to uh, fine tune the pre-trained model, and we kind of got some results, but it sometimes hallucinates, but it um, get the, the base uh, functionality, that means the Garish model. If we ask it something related to the data, it returns. And also if I ask it to uh, classify a given uh, text into add or not add, uh, sometimes it gets correctly, uh, but sometimes it doesn't. That's partly because the, the number of data is small. Uh, we only used, uh, at, I mean, at the end, uh, we only used like uh, 1,600 rows, which was very low. We realized that. Um, yeah, if we add more data, uh, I think that can be improved. I was trying to do that yesterday, but uh, the instance was down at the beginning it was working try to load more data from the telegram uh, data channel from slack uh, compiled even uh, evenly distribute data for add and unadd but uh, yeah so that's that that was the progress uh, the lessons learned um uh, the we have we have uh, go through the hugo Yes, I mean, hugging face ecosystem, how to load uh, a data or pre-trained model uh, and even push our own model or data set to the hugging face. Uh, yeah, that, that was the learnings. And for future, uh, I believe I will, I will try to, or we will try to work on the fine tuning uh, uh, because it's not getting the ads non ads exactly as we would like to. So that's my report. Uh, I think Reddit maybe can say something about the rag pipeline. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Good. That's that's good. Um, thanks. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then I, I expect the group member at least to say something everyone at least and Reddit maybe just you can continue as well and Magdes and um, Abdul Hamid and others in the group you could contribute yeah go on Reddit okay so for the rock part uh, I think I can say just by words uh, no, I, so I, I, I would expect presentation no, no, I, I think words okay. usually are good, but on Mondays, I would expect something to be presented. Oh. So either share okay. your, I guess it's for your report. Yeah, you can re share your report uh, or report. So, 
Okay, so like we, we can share the code, I think. Let me, let me search for that. Give me a couple of minutes for that. No worries. In the meantime, others can proceed from the group. Makdes Abdul Hamid. My connection was interrupted, so I just joined now. What was the question? Like Yaya presented part of the work that the group did. So could you show also where, you know, like your understanding so far? Um, and, you know, based on from your report, your understanding and, from, you know, the, your contribution, what has been achieved? Okay. And by sharing your report or your code. And, and this is the same for every other groups. So just make sure that you are preparing your report and code or slide you have. In principle, this would have been easier if a, if a group has prepared a presentation. But I imagine it seems that people haven't understood what on Monday we have actually a presentation um, of the previous week. So, but that's the case. Like for next week, I would expect people to be prepared when they come. You might be asked. So how many were in the group? Sorry, just in group, um, was that group two or? We're six. Yeah, and why am, why am I not hearing other groups, uh, also other members trying to cover? Okay. Uh, was Makadas that I, I am sharing your report? Okay. Tell me where to go. Yeah. Yeah. Can we get back to like down? Okay. Okay. So which which section? Uh, there is like a diagram showing what we do it. Okay. So this one. About this one yeah this one okay. this is what we try to cover in the project the four pointers for the fine tuning data processing module configuration ui and drag so we fully uh, able to okay, let me I can't see the shared screen. Ah, it's not visible what I'm sharing. Okay, this other seems they can see it. So um, is it visible just Again, like other people, can you see my screen? Uh, is it just yes. maybe Macadess's? Okay. So Macadess, then it's your network since. Okay, so. Maybe I can continue? Yeah, you can. I will be sharing my screen. Let me stop. I can't see the shared screen here. 
I think your network seems an issue. So I stopped sharing my screen and Abdulhami is continuing. Okay. Is it visible? Yeah, it's visible. Yeah. Okay, so I'll start with uh, a report I wrote for uh, the final report. So for this, the, I stated the objective, which was creating an Amharic rug pipeline that will generate Amharic-based creative ads. So the tech stack, the, the, the tech stack we used was Llama 2, uh, a large language model released by Meta AI. We also used, try to use uh, Chroma DB to store the provided data documents in the vector database, as well as uh, we heavily use the Hugging Face Transformers to actually load the model. So here, uh, I'll start with uh, the project work workthrough. So we first started uh, testing the automatic capability of the uh, Lama 2, the base Lama 2 model. We got a result that was somewhat gibberish, so we uh, which was expected as it's trained on a very low, uh, it, it was mainly trained on the English language. So we then started to look out for him that has a better Amharic capability. And from the challenge document, we found the Gary Logistics model. Then we tried to load that model. And this is the result that we found when we tried to, uh, when we tried to actually run the model and run an inference in it with it, so we found it to be performing good for the Amharic language, as you can see here. This was uh, input, and what medicine should I take a flu, should I take if I have a flu, and it re responds in Amharic. So then we decided to fine tune this model so that it can uh, generate a, an ad for us. So uh, the, the task of preparing the data came next, so our indie goal was to have the model generate ads given a certain brief, like the target group, uh, for example, age between 20 and 30, football fans, uh, some location, a product info uh, about electronics, uh, and the brand info, a brand named XYZ. So this was what uh, the, the model will be given, and it will generate an ad at the end. So to that end, uh, the model will first need to uh, identify or differentiate a text that is an advertisement from not an advertisement, so that later when we ask it to generate an ad, it will be able to generate an ad since it previously knows what an adver advertisement looks like. So we went on to, to label the te Telegram channel, as you can see here. Uh, we, we, these are the, uh, the Telegram channel messages, and we label them uh, on the right here. So once we did that, we had about uh, 24,000 rows total, so from two channels, we had 24,000 rows in about 800 of which were ads. So uh, this, we when we tried to fine tune our model using this 24,000 rows of which only 800 were ads, the model would later uh, output not advertisement to every input when we tested it. So when whenever we gave it uh, a text, even if that was an ad, it would output that it wasn't an ad. So maybe we thought that it has been biased by the, uh, by the input we gave it when we fine tuned it. So next, uh, we decided to actually uh, actually evenly divide the data to an ad and not an ad. So this gave us about 1,600 rows of which 800 something were ads and the remaining were not ads. So then we, we uh, iterated over each row and added an, an instruction that reads identify whether the given uh, text is an ad or not from the given input and make sure to respond only with advertisement or not advertisement. So this is our instruction fine tuning. So we are trying to tell the model that what we want is to, for it to classify whether it's an ad or not and it, we don't need any other output from it. So we then fed this instruction along with the input of the message which is the text of the telegram message and also a labeled output to the model so that it can know that whether it's an advertisement or not and then we try to fine tune it so this letter uh, led to out of memory issues since we're running it on a 24 gb nvidia 18 gpu so we need to look into how we can lower the memory footprint of the model so one solution was to use 
quantization. So quantization was a technique, easy technique to reduce the computational and newer dose of running inference by representing the widths uh, in lower lower precision data types like 8-bit integer. So instead of using the usual 32-bit floating point, we reduced it to actually 4 bits in our case so that we, it would require uh, less memory and it would also consume less energy. So this was the config that we used to load it in 4 bits, our uh, model, so that it would be quantized. Therefore, we use the 4-bit model, the 4-bit quantization, and also uh, the PIF to LoRa config to fine-tune the model. So when fine-tuning the model, we'll only be using a small amount of the parameters. So there are about 7 billion of the um, model. So we try to use the PIF to LoRa config so that we can only train about 1% of the 7 billion model parameter. So we experimented a lot with the R, the ranks, alpha, the LoRa dropout, and other uh, values, the LoRa config values. However, uh, like it took us a lot of time to actually uh, get it to uh, train only 1% of the 7 billion parameter. Finally, we started to fine tune the model, and it completed with an average training loss of above 1, which was usually in the range of uh, 3 to 6 when we tested with different hyperparameter configurations. So this was not a good result. Uh, so we next we decided to test it with inputs to see if it can categorize an add or not. Unfortunately, it then outputs everything as an add for every input we provided it. So now we had uh, the opposite of what we are getting the first time. So the first time we are getting not an add, even if the text was an add, but now it's outputting an add even when the pro the input when the input was not an add. So now we decided to change our uh, approach. So instead of asking the model to learn how to categorize an ad, why not make it learn how to generate an ad? So now we created a new instruction to actually uh, fine tune the model. So the instruction reads as generate an ad given a category. So we'll be providing it a labeled uh, category, uh, for example, a media, entertainment, and others, and later on, the response should be an ad that would be uh, spitted out by the model. So we drafted this instruction, then we tried to fine tune it, and we got the following um, the following training result. So as you can see here, the training loss is 0 0.003, which was good. So next uh, came the testing. So asking the model to generate an ad given a category. So here we can see uh, generate an advertisement given a category uh, retail. So what was the response is this uh, So somewhat of uh, an ad looking response. This seemed promising, but on further testing, we started to hallucinate and output repeating words. So as you can see here, generate an ad given a category, category media. And the response would be as the such data persona with someone caplasmide garicaracro. So next from starting from here, I think it's uh, just hallucinating, repeating words. So this was not really uh, the based result that we thought we uh, should be having. So we think uh, if we can fine tune the model on a much bigger data that has been labeled, we can get a better result from our LLM. So we are also work working on our UI so that we can have a place where the necessary information can be provided to the model easily by the user. So this was how our UI started to look like. So ideally, the above would ask the model, the, to the, the user to add a document and that contains information about the product that uh, he or she wants the LLM to generate an R for, as well as other information like R target group, location age, and like in the above and the like. So, this data will then be provided to the model and a catchy ad will be generated by the model and return it to the uh, user. So uh, conclusion from this was, from this project, I especially uh, uh, as a group as well, we learned a lot about fine tuning large models, large language models to specialize um, on domain specific tasks. How using methods such as quantization in LoRa leads to an efficient use of resource and potentially run fine tuning even on a Google Colab. So that is what I will be trying to do 
like running uh, the model, trying to run the model on maybe Google Colab since you will not be having access to the uh, instance. So this is the beginning of a lot more research in the future. And I'm glad I got to learn and experience this for now. So this is my report. Thank you. Fantastic. Yeah, it also helps us really understand the group's effort uh together with also what uh yeah, yeah was presenting so this is excellent from the research side as well as from the result side so meron um reddit and maybe just we don't have time so maybe do you want to add something what your you know what was your like what were you putting effort and then um what were you able to get uh, within that effort yeah reddit So like now I can share the code, maybe the rock site. Can you hear me? Yes, we do. Yes, go go for it. Yeah. Okay. So on the rock side, since my group members had mentioned about the models, the yeah, the fine tuning in the model side, and what we've tried to do is uh, accept after we accept the documents about the ad, which is specific with that that we want to uh, generate an advertisement for, we will uh, we will get the we will get the message and we will try to put that, that message on the. Uh, on the vector database using the chroma vector database so here what we do is trying to uh we've we've tried both open api and another models for the embedding so that that is why you see the open api key and also loading other models uh, at the same time um so like there is this three part that create to, to create the vector store the embedding in the query actually we have merged the embedding part with the create vector store Part, so we can start from here, I guess. Um, so uh, we, there are different kinds of uh, models that can understand Amharic, and from them, we, we've tried to use this one, which is the BERT uh, multilingual keys, which is fine tuned in Amharic language. Uh, BERT actually can, it's just a model which is not done for Amharic, but for every, to be, you know, to, to be uh, simple, to, to be manipulated with many languages so that there is this model that is fine-tuned with Amharic. So uh, we've used Recognizer and the model from it. And we, what we've done here is we, we try to embed the document that will be inputted, that contains the information about the advertisement to be generated into the Chroma Vector database. So it, we will return an embedding from here. And as you can see from this, there is the, we will, doc, we will, doc, we will um, save the document and the, 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 the files will be chunked and then Finally, the embedding, the embedding generated from that file will be saved into the Chroma database. And the other thing that we need for uh, a vector database for is the query, which will come from the uh, from the users again. Um, so also here, uh, we will just we we will receive the query from the uh, from the person, and we will try to generate an ad using that input and referring the content we've just entered from the uh, from the first step or the documents so um, we were facing actually some problems while trying to use those embeddings and doing similarities between uh, some words to check that we're doing correct embedding or not and we've just used the uh, the models that we that we think that it is better than the others but still it was not precise so um, to, to, to just say something about the whole yeah, hmm. the, the the model like the embedding was not that accurate from your test. It was not that accurate. I mean, trying to yeah. words that have different meanings uh, or the different things, we like we, we sometimes get a very high uh, uh, similarities while doing the cosine similarity, a very high similarity like zero point eight or something. But you know, we we've just tried uh, even including OpenAI, we've just tried all the models and we took that why we what is better. Okay, great. Uh, you were saying something you wanted to add something. Um 
And like uh, overall about the projects, we have learned a lot about the uh, fine tuning, uh, fine using, uh, you know, fine tuning a model or a base model, and how to, you know, how to get the best out of um, uh, a model, or how to use a tech. Um, I mean, uh, how to use a meter. So what what to change in order to have uh, the the best kind of model, or in order to generate uh, a best model that is functional to our use and yeah the, like we've learned a lot of a, a lot of things last week that is what i was about to say yeah wonderful thank you thank, thank you also for showing us this side of the your your work thanks okay meron do you want to add um something about what were you working if you are there Okay, if not, then let's go to group three. Um, who would go from group three? If you have a group presentation, let's hear it. If not, you can also go as individual representing group three. Abey, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So good morning, everyone. Morning. So unfortunately, we didn't prepare a presentation for this, uh, for today but i believe uh, we can present it in a way that we can highlight everybody's work and uh, how we approach the project and everything so to give you a quick overview of what we have done uh, let me share our project approach and show you guys how we approach this project Yes, so uh, uh, when we come to this week's project, we kind of uh, started our project by defining our vision and scope for this project. Uh, we, uh, upon selecting the visions, we kind of created a way in order to uh, select the right model for our specific task. And after that, we, uh, we went to the uh, fine tuning and prompt engineering. Uh, to be specific, on the RAG system, we did the prompt engineering in the old context retrieval things. And on the other side, we did the fine tuning to make it better. And we evaluate our results and kind of iterate it back to the first one. So that's the whole application approach. So basically, uh, when we come to our uh, projects, the first thing we did was we kind of analyzed uh, what type of data sets that we have and how we can approach it so the first thing was uh, the data processing so our data preparations uh, basically have been uh, extracting the zip file that was provided to us and uh, kind of iterating on how we should do it so to be specific on this uh, project uh, Nathaniel was the one who handled much of it uh, along with Carol and uh, Ikram so I think Nathaniel and Carol can say uh, sum up on this and uh, we, can, we can kind of continue after that. Uh, okay. Okay, Abel. Uh, good morning, everyone. Yeah, mm -hmm. so should... Yeah, okay. Maybe I can share the, like the sheet that we used to process the data. Then I'll just quickly summarize and you can continue, Abel. All right. All right. Okay. So, like, uh, as Abel mentioned, so after we discussed and we tried to, like, uh, divide a task. Uh, like I was, I, I naturally fall into this task, which is organizing the data, collecting it, doing some cleaning, labeling, and uh, organizing it for fine tuning, like fine tuning process. So what we did is basically like we uh, first first thing, we, like we are using the raw data that we get from Nutrien Academy team. Then unfortunately, like we have an issue, which is like, uh, it has a lot of manual labeling plus uh, the amount of ad that the raw data have was not enough. I think we have discussed it in the middle of the week. So our approach was changed to collecting, uh, like try to trying to get, channels and groups uh, that, that, are, that have uh, ad, like ad-rich content 
and if possible, like very professional uh, ad content. So uh, for each category, we try to look for uh, like very comprehensive and representative channels uh, that have uh, like very uh, ad rich content. So we select a lot of uh, channels. Then once we analyze everything, we pick down the ones uh, that has, like that that have uh, contents that are relevant to the our needs. So after that, we process the data, uh, extract it, and yeah, uh, we 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 maneuver manually like to each individual uh, channel. We try to go each line by line and try, try to remove the ones that are not relevant and yeah do some cleaning and the labeling that like the way that we labeled is like by default every channel have a, a label so for example for this specific case the members it's a transportation like uh, we label it as you know a travel uh, ad channel so by default we gave it that label but manually we go over it and if we have contents that are not uh, like relevant to travel advertisement we will delete it we focus on the ones that have a lot of word, word counts so we sort it and we carefully go over each line by line and clean it label it then after that uh, that was how we collected and feed the prepared the final uh, data so basically this is like once we once we clean everything and label it we have this amount of line of rows uh, rows of data with this amount of character so for later use like we divided the total characters by each category so like i don't know if i say fortunately or unfortunately we just have to and then add uh, channels but it was the total amount of data we have it was heavily on like they are not ads uh yeah but like we try to represent the whole data with uh, every category and the data was very relevant uh, i mean like it's up to dated the the farthest data that we have is on 2018 but most of them were very close to our times yeah and we have a lot of uh yeah, these are the word frequency in our data set. We just wanted to see how the final output is going to be affected with characters and English words. It turns out that there are there were there are a lot of Amharic words that are frequently found in our data sets, which is good. So like this is the very generic outlook of how we process the data. And Abel, if you have any specific things that you want me to present. Or highlight you can continue all right so uh, yeah so the thing was uh, we uh, after collecting the data provided to us and uh, going through them we found that uh, a very few amount of the data is an ad so we decided to uh, kind of retrieve more ad data more relevant ad data uh, through the telegram channels and everything and uh, that's basically uh, what McNair presented and i believe uh, you can highlight uh, on the cleaning and the other things as well and we can proceed to the next step yeah on the cleaning uh, we we have a script to clean the mentions the links we basically use the script that we get from uh, the, the code that was shared but we also added uh, some other line of code and yeah, the only thing that were remaining after cleaning was the English characters, the symbols, and the uh, Amharic content and the emojis. All other things uh, were removed from the data. And after that, like once we imported to the sheet, we sort the data by the word count. And manually, we go over each line and try to see that we're not relevant. And like we basically just delete that row, or if it is the if the label is not if the label is not actually like the default label, we just change it. Um, 
yeah, that was that was the, how we were cleaning and labeling the data. Yeah. Great, great. I mean, this is really awesome. But just in the matter, in the interest of time, let's shorten yeah. the details. But I think this is relevant that we see. Um, and so, yeah, you may continue to the next part. But thanks. Uh, sure. sure. You were continuing, so just like you can go on to the next part. Yeah. All right, all right. So the next step was uh, selecting the model. So uh, the things we considered uh, to select the model was how uh, Amharic in Beijing proficiency, meaning uh, if the language knows uh, Amharic preceding to this uh, fine tuning step. And we also analyzed the fine tuning flexibility. Uh, the training efficiency and having face integration. So this was the four factors that we are trying to evaluate our model. on. So uh, we created a uh, spreadsheet and kind of highlighted all the uh, things we can uh, consider points while selecting a specific model. So uh, upon our research, we found out that uh, Mistral was better at understanding things, but uh, the Lava 2 is uh, kind of trained in Amharic on the pretended datasets. So uh, after this, we considered uh, Mistral and uh, Lama 2 to be our uh, suitable models to uh, train. So when we come to our training, we identified that uh, our models perform better when, when we do pre-train them because uh, even because the models have not uh, been exposed to uh, Amharic datasets, uh, we cannot uh, kind of uh, fine tune them in a way we can uh, make them better without a pre -tra training. Uh, so we identified that as a gap and used the contemporary MRI corpus. So this basically is a data set where uh, it contains a uh, plain text and XML format uh, raw data, which is basically an AMRI data sets, but uh, the XML file has been labeled uh, data sets. The tagging was done uh, as you can see here, uh, based on the adjective adverbs and all the other things uh, like highlighted here. And we tried to train our model using the XML, but we failed to do so because uh, it ended up uh, eating most of our GPU and uh, RAM. And uh, uh, since we cannot be able to see the results without fine tuning, we kind of uh, uh, cut the data in half and train the model. So after training the model, we were uh, kind of able to understand the pre-training uh, was, uh, it took a very long time to train it. And uh, it was a step uh, to make our better, to make our model better. So our training, our uh, training loss was uh, about 0 0.4, which was good. And uh, to do this, we used our own custom tokenizer. So uh, when we come to our custom tokenizer process, uh, Carol have done most of the task, and I want I want him to give give us a quick highlight on what we have done there. Carol, can you please explain what we have done here? Yeah, yeah, sure. So uh, as I will say, so we are to, we noticed that we needed to create our own to token. Uh, custom tokenizer. So my job was to create a tokenizer that we can use. So uh, I did uh, a couple of uh, around 10 to tokenizers. Uh, I used, uh, we used uh, different data sets. So the one, the final one that we did was uh, we, we found a data set that's available to around 300,000 uh, sentences, line of rows of sentences that were uh, uh, found on Hugin Face and GitHub. So I used that data sheet and created a, should I screen, should I, uh, can I share my screen or? Yeah, yeah, you can you can share your screen, yeah. Okay, okay. All right. Make it quick, yeah. Um, yeah, let's see the back link. It's busy, right? Yeah, it's busy. Okay, so I used a sentence uh, tokenizer and used a vocabulary size. We used a, voc a vocabulary size of uh, 30,000 30, from 10,000 to 100,000, but we found that uh, our model where we're not capable of training on 100,000 tokens. So we 
we use dog juma number of 50,000 for the final one. And we used uh, uh, that we found on uh, uh, so for 100,000 uh, rows. And we custom, we made custom uh, tokenizer and we trained our model on it. So our own uh, token uh, was able to uh, tokenize where this was is, but uh, we found that the loss was a bit higher and we had to, to do a multiple uh, talk tokenizers. So uh, the final one was this one. So it uses a subword tokenization. And it can uh, any word that was given to it and efficiently. So that's uh, the highlight of what I did. Excellent. And were you able to compare it with, for example, Gary Tokenizer? Yeah, we did. We did. So the Gary Tokenizer was, uh, first of all, the tokenizer was not available. Uh, they didn't share the tokenizer, uh, dot, uh, dot model, uh, dot tokenizer, or dot JSON uh, file. Uh, but when we compared it with the uh, Lama 2 to to tokenizer, even though the loss was higher, but it was able to, to tokenize wh where this with is and able to give somewhat uh, a meaningful sen sentence when we tried it. So I think we have. Uh, a collab sheet that we tried uh, the tokenizer on. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, this one is the last one. So this one is the, the I think, the 30,000 uh, thought to tokenizer. So as we can see, that was a word base, uh, I mean, sub word base. And it was able to tokenize it with ease. But when we used other uh, tokenizers, it wasn't able to do this uh, efficiently because some of them were uh, uh, word based and they were not able to do this in you know, sub word things. But the main uh, drawback of uh, this custom to to tokenizer was when uh, we tried to tokenize English words since it, did, it, didn't, it was not uh, trained on. Uh, English word is on or any English data set it was not able to do it so with efficiency. Yeah, so that's where was the main drawback. And the training also. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Carol. So uh, as the Carol mentioned, the one drawback we were facing was uh, we were not able to kind of create uh, both English and Amharic data set to tokenize our words, but uh, the tokenization works well with Amharic and uh, embedding the English one, I think that was a step we could have taken, but due to the constraint of time, we weren't able to. So uh, we thank you, Carol. So proceeding to uh, our fine tuning model, uh, Mubarak and I and Carol have been doing that. So with Carol tokenizations, uh, we were closely working with him so that we can understand what's happening and why our loss is so high and everything. So uh, regarding here, I think Mubarak can say uh, some about how we have the fine tuning. And uh, before proceeding to uh, Mubarak, I want to share some insights with you guys. So uh, as you can see here, uh, we kind of track our each training uh, using our uh, A1DB code. It's basically, a, you, you can track uh, what's happening on your uh, training the training those the training runtime the system information how much GPU to use and everything so basically uh, we tried multiple models using our uh, data sets uh, and we found out that uh, the llama 2 pre-trained model uh, with the one I told you earlier uh, the half uh, corpus amoric uh, data set training was performing much efficiently uh, regarding a training step and the free training box and everything but uh, with regard uh, stable ai also kind of performs well and uh, microsoft phi 2 uh, kind of does not understand them or in any sense and uh, we needed a high and much uh, much uh, data sets uh, to kind of train the microsoft 
Pi 2. We also consider Snistra 70 and we uh, kind of see the same uh, results. Uh, other than that, the pre-training took much of the time and after training, we kind of consider Lama 270, Lama 270 CAT and Lama 270 uh, HF models. So to be specific, uh, we found out that Lama 270 uh, HF model uh, performs better uh, when pre-training and fine-tuning it. So uh, Nora can uh, proceed on the fine-tuning that we have done. Okay. <coughs> Um, I can I proceed with the presentation? Perhaps. As you like, you can present or you may just talk. I mean, uh, it's usually people don't understand if it's not, they don't connect, but it's fine. Okay, like as uh, I will mention in the third side, when we uh, use a custom tokenizer for uh, fine tuning, uh, the training loss was so high. Uh, and it is better uh, uh, to use uh, it's the model's tokenizer for fine tuning, as we have understood. And after doing the fine tuning, the result was uh, not much that much uh, as we expected. Uh, so what we understand is uh, <coughs> the data we have uh, is not that much uh, how the mod the model was uh, trained. So. Uh, instead of using large uh, models like Mistral 7B and Lama 2 7B, uh, let's try to use uh, low parameter uh, models like stable uh, AI and uh, Microsoft Phi 2. But uh, especially for the Phi 2 model, the result was uh, not as we uh, expected. It was generated ASEAN instead of Amharic. Uh, so uh, we changed our mind, uh, continue with uh, fine tuning Lama 270. Uh, and even though, uh, even we still, uh, still we don't get uh, a good result, so we plan to uh, pre train the model uh, that, uh, like Abel mentioned, with a million uh, data set uh, we got. But doing, uh, we can't do that. Uh, with our uh, resource limitation uh, so we split the data and try to pre-train it uh, and after doing that somehow the result was uh, better and we uh, then continued to fine-tune uh, that model and what we understood uh, is uh, from the gary models the prompt uh, after showing the prompts they give uh, they they tell the model in, even though it was in english the prompt uh it they mentioned that the model can generate amharic uh, and like uh, something uh telling the model it can uh and doing uh, by doing that somehow the result was some good uh but what we understood if uh, instead of uh doing this maybe uh, translating the output somehow makes sense uh, for our case uh, because they generate as abdul hamid uh, mentioned uh, repeating words uh, somehow it is disappointing anyhow we tried our best this is what i can say All right. So uh, after uh, fine tuning our model, we proceeded into our uh, RAG system to make uh, the retrieval and the context better. And uh, much of the task have been done here by uh, Ikram and Rahan. Uh, so we kind of uh, divide and conquer uh, different aspects of these projects. So uh, can you uh, share what we have done in this specific uh, section, Rahan and Ikram? So let me continue. Hello, everyone. So I'm away from my PC and I can't actually share my work, but presenting a short, a short highlighting. I was more focused on the RAG system and I started use, I started I started it with researching on the retrievers since we thought that semantic search won't, won't work that much, but it was not successful since, uh, it, since I got an error, a rate limit error, and couldn't solve that. 
since I was expected also to more focus on another tasks. So coming to the embedding, I think Rahan has uh, more to say, but highlighting we were trying to first embed a Gary logistics model using a different approach. Finally, we got a, a resource that uses a Langchain CPP embedder in order to embed the Lama2 model. But again, we were having a different continuous errors. And finally, we decided to use a sentence transformer in order to, imbo to embed the, the, the model. So like, finally, I was working on the UI and front-end implementation. This is a short highlight of my work. Thanks, Kra. Okay, hello everyone. Am I audible now? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, yeah. you can share your screen by the way, bro. Um, okay. So um what we try to do is like to to to, the, to the build a better understanding of what, what embedding is and then how we can use that for Amaric case. So first our first trial was using OpenAI uh, as we did in last week project. And like it, it was actually uh, as far as I have seen till this point, the GPT-4 was uh, a better one in also in retrieving the the related contents given the context. Um, okay, hold on. <laughs> What's okay? So and afterward, this we we try to use other embedding models and then um, actually it's better to share the entire thingy. Okay. So I think my screen is visible now, right? So like it, it, after no, that, it's coming, no, but it's coming, yeah. It's yeah. Now we're visible. If we can see in here in sentence transformer meters now say it's in papers also sound. I found something that that they are better better in embeddings, and I we try to explore the different models, but uh, at the end their retrieved content is not much of a, a satisfactory, and. Uh, I tried also the OpenAI, and finally we got something about this uh, Llama CPP, which is uh, we can we can use the Llama2 model as as an embedding, but we have to create this .bin file, which is which was about 3.5 kind of GB. We found some paper which we can convert the actual model into uh, this. Still, it's it's not lightweight. Uh, the one advantage of the sentence transformer models was they are lightweight and easy to load and easy to embed also. And uh, about these Lava CPP models, they are they, they're a bit intensive and then not much of use. But afterwards, creating this file when we try to use it, we get a lot of a lot of errors, and it was it was almost difficult and impossible. So finally, we get to put. Uh, as options like the OpenAI model, and then for the Llama models, we used sentence transformers, or we can use also OpenAI, and we tried to explore both of them. Uh, and we built backend the API for uploading files for the rug and also uh, for the chat. Uh, this was some of the screenshots. This is the home page, and um. This is when we try to generate it, but it, it is it's taking too much of a time. In a way, when I when I try to run it using lang chain, when I use into it took about five minutes kind of a thing to get a response, which is too much. I don't know why it's taking, but when I try to use it in notebook, it generates the result in one minute, kind of one minute, 23 seconds, kind of a thing. So uh it generates something, but the results were not satisfactory since it was taking too much of also even the, the CPU. Um, at the final in here, we can see when I tried this in here, it, it looks like some it generates some repetitive things and also meaningless things. Um, but still, it's the results are not satisfactory. One one more thing to add also for the team, uh, I felt I felt like we didn't define any kind of benchmarks to evaluate our uh, models right because we just give him some dummy prompt and then we just try to navigate whether it is meaningful or not whether it's good or not but i i felt like that so that's just for, that's me, not... for me to understand was mm -hmm. that one on embedding or was that one on generating or on, on the fine tune on 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 everything also yeah. for for the rug and for the system also it's it's off it's for the team for our for our team also and for for the whole also if 
when we are given such a project, if it is possible, let's say it's about generating advertisement content. So given these contents, it should generate this. So if we have such benchmarks, we can evaluate it, let's say using GPT-4, like, right? So if you have the expected output and the inputs, and then we can evaluate how much um, related content is generated and uh, assess the results in, in such kind of a way we can we can clearly define the improvement in percentage and then uh, the accuracy also uh, that's my input in any way we get to learn a lot of things the team collaboration was crazy i, I would just say i i'm really grateful for everyone yesterday we met yesterday and we had a lovely time for sure and i love this thing basically i love from 10 academy what i know what i love now is like having this great team and i'm grateful for them um that's all thank you yes. wonderful good to hear that okay, so, Abel. all right so to finalize uh what we have been doing uh you can stop sharing now Abraham. sorry So uh, to kind of highlight what we have done and uh, how we can uh, improve it uh, to make it short, uh, we, I want to focus on feature works. So basically we kind of uh, emphasize on pre-training the data on a more detailed data sets because uh, we uh, have, have seen what Gary Logistics have been doing and the pivotal part they have done is basically training their data sets with the Arbor data set, uh, with Alpaca data sets, with the translated Alpaca data set to be specific. So that was a game changer to be in my perspective, meaning uh, they converted the whole Alpaca data sets uh, to Amharic. So uh, we experimented with Gari model in, uh, intensively, meaning we kind of asked it uh, for, uh, let's say, for example, for it for him to generate a uh, um national bank uh, commercial and something so uh, it's basically giving the same outputs as our model because it's repeating words it's hallucinating and everything so uh, that's the thing we not we have noticed but uh, when we ask it uh, contents that we have uh, trained it on it kind of uh, answers a more understandable context or uh, output so the one thing we want to highlight is uh, we can make our models better if we train them in a pre-trained data sets, meaning uh, a large amount of data sets might have a big impact on our outputs. So uh, apart from that, we want to emphasize uh, on using the pre-trained or the uh, fine-tuned model to uh, create the embedding for our RAG systems because uh, those embeddings will uh, retrieve the right context for our RAG systems and we kind of uh, we kind of will be able to provide that context within our prompt and the uh, it will be a guide for the basically for the llm to kind of generate a relevant output so that's basically the one thing i want to add so uh, finally i want to highlight what Abraham had said the benchmarks was uh, kind of it, it kind of played an illusion because we cannot uh, infer a, base, a benchmark or we cannot up, look up to a specific metric in order to understand uh, we are heading on the right or not that was a basic challenge we were facing and apart from that everybody was working uh, all night we were collaborating very much and I believe we worked on this project intensively we tried to understand each aspect and we were aware of what each team have been doing and it was, it was a great experience and I'm grateful for all my team members and uh, that's basically what I suppose you think. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, team. Uh, was that team three? Yeah. Really good work, good collaboration. Okay, so we will continue the presentation tomorrow as well, but let's have one more team so that it's uh, divided three teams today, three teams tomorrow. Uh, can is anyone willing to present another team from um, so we, or we can just go exactly as was recommended so i mean maybe that was didn't go well but anyone willing to proceed today uh, five six can you hear me yeah, abraham yeah sorry my raise hand button seems to have been disappeared <laughs> so that's oh. why i just speak so yeah, go on. Yeah. We can go on to present today. Yeah, yeah. please. 
Okay, I think I might have to rejoin again. Also, my present share, my present screen is also off. So can I come back again? Yeah. If you excuse yeah, me. Yeah, you can. You can. Okay. So that means group four, five, and six. No, group four, six, and one. You should prepare for tomorrow um, to present. Okay. Yeah, Daniel, you can proceed. Are you? Oh, yeah. can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, Daniel. Okay, yeah. I'm from uh, group five. Oh. Yeah, you can proceed. Yeah. Okay, uh, since uh, I am not uh, on my computer, can I share my just report on my... Yes. yes. Okay. I think we can see your screen. But oh, you can't see it? Then. We can, but uh, yeah, so you we probably need to, but if it's a report that is published, you can instead you can share it with me and then I can share for you. Okay, okay, let me just okay, yeah, okay. so just share me the link, yeah, because that one. Uh, sorry guys, yeah. am I still on or? You, you are on, uh, Daniel is also sharing from your group, so just then you can uh, proceed together or you can proceed after him. Uh, which one, is it synchronized like the previous? If that is the case, then you can, you guys can coordinate. Or maybe let me just, uh, let me just give the overview and uh, both my teammates okay. will go on the yeah so daniel then you can unshare and then okay. uh, Ab abraham then would uh, give you a chance to then continue go on. okay uh, let me just share my screen uh, so we have really haven't prepared a, a slide for it but we'll go on with the report, uh, the medium post. And uh, since there are quotes and images there, I think it will be very explanatory. And uh, my other teammates will head on with the other uh, tasks they did and the other details. So is, is my screen visible? Can I start? Yes, you, it is visible. And uh, we'll see. OK. Okay, so uh, this is group five. Uh, uh, we've been working for, on LLM tooling to generate uh, Amharic ads. Uh, so I'll be giving a quick overview of our group project and our works. Uh, and yeah, stay tuned. Okay, so uh, the business need was uh, pretty much the same for, as everyone. We tried to uh, bet better the ad generation process for Akam, uh, an African startup based uh on working on ai and blockchain uh so uh in this project we made sure that uh, we try to make sure that their advertisements are both catchy and relevant to telegram community uh, to achieve this the technology is required the technology required is uh, having a good amharic text embedding and text generation capability so our general uh workflow or approach to having a better amharic generation using uh, llms looked something like this so we had a pre-trained model. Uh, we used a pre-trained LLM, and we uh, fine-tune it using a Telegram dataset. Then after uh, fine-tuning this dataset, uh, after fine-tuning this LLM, 
we will have a generation uh, that is based on a retrieval in augmentation. So in, in simple words, this is what we had to do. So we, we want our LLM to better its Amharic uh, or know its language better. And then we wanted it to generate an ad in Amharic, uh, any kind of ad. Then we wanted it to have a specified ad in Amharic given a specific uh, brand information and context. Uh, so the overview uh, for this uh, project, we, tr we wanted to use the Mistral 7B. Uh, we had in mind to use the Gary Logistics as well as the Mistral B, but due to uh, time allocation and resource, we headed on with only Mistral 7B. We did our, we did our research on Mistral 7B and saw that it was performing well or uh, had a better accuracy and uh, precision as well as uh, retrieving uh, than the other models. So we tried to experiment with the 7B, uh, the Mr. 7B. Uh, so uh, the overview, uh, after when, when we try to make the business need come to life, uh, we need an efficient RAG system in the end to uh, help us with generating the ideal ads in Amharic uh, that is specific to brand information and campaign. Uh, uh, so uh, the diet, Part from the data set, we had a telegram. Uh, uh, we have te we had a telegram data that would, uh, that was in JSON format, so we had to clean over that and process that. And that's the data we used for unsupervised and supervised training. Uh, so uh, the end product will be displayed through a front end where we where interested companies can sign in to generate uh, their brand and campaign specific Amharic ads for the channel using a generative AI. So to go to the technical overview, uh, the first process we had to go through our, uh, through the teamwork was the data processing. A uh, total of 46,000 rows of raw telegram messages was cleaned and pre-processed for this task, as well as manually labeled uh, for to get a better uh, input output in the end. Uh, so this this was our, our one of our tasks. So we had to go over 46,000 46, rows uh, manually to label them each, and we found over 635 ads on Yeni Tube uh, from uh, uh, from this row, and also the, the ads were 28,000. So we added the Tikva data to this, and it becomes a total of 46,000. Later on, we were given uh, ad only. Uh, Telegram data, which, which was very useful for the fine tuning part. So after uh, we go over, <clears throat> after we're done, sorry, after we're finished with the data processing, we head on to tokenizing. Uh, so tokenization is just, as you all know, it's a, it's a process of breaking down the input text into individual units, uh, like words or subwords, and we call them tokens. So uh, with this uh, project, we tried to experiment with two tokenizers. We used the, the garage logistics as well as the sentence piece uh, for the sake of experiment. So we tried to compare what we had in both uh, results. This was the code to ge that generated uh, the tokens using sentence piece, and this was the code that generated the tokens using uh, token the Gary logistics uh, tokenizer. So we found that we had more tokens on the uh, Gary logistics than the sentence piece. Uh, so we stick with we stuck we stick to that, uh, and uh, for as as you as stick with what like sorry you stick with which one? We stuck with the Gary logistics. Okay. So what does it mean more tokens there than what do you mean by is that by one token contains more characters or what did, what do you mean by? I mean total number of tokens. Ah. The total number of tokens we had in the end uh, were more uh, use. Uh, uh, from the guard logistics than the the, the sentence piece. Okay. But that metric, you know, is not a good metric, right? It's like it's also the number of characters per token is also another because you can always you can always have can have more tokens, but the quality of the actually the tokenizer can be very low. So it's not necessary that uh, yeah, but it's it as a one metric, that's fine. Proceed, yeah. yeah, yeah. We also uh, tried to contact Nati and sh sh shared our uh, this the sentence piece tokenizing result, and he also insisted we try another token. That's why we went over to the guard 
our initial plan was with this. And no, no, I mean, I just, may, may, maybe that's right. I'm just more saying just yeah. that, that word, that statement alone might not be a sufficient criteria to select. Uh, having more token is not a necessity condition, but the rest I understand. Uh, the reason I mentioned Nati was to say that he mentioned the same thing as you did. That's why I mentioned Nati. That, good. We sent him. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I am I'm much more my why I'm correcting you is because others, you know, it's important. It's not just one metric, but definitely, of course, I imagine that the guy like the Gary one is good. It's not about good or not, but the actual metric you said, which is the other one has more tokens is not necessarily true that's what i mean but as i said like it's just only correcting that uh, not about the quality of i think the quality of gary is, is better it has been checked again so i, I can imagine okay okay uh so yeah uh, using the that metric and the others we stick with uh, the gary logistics and after that we head on to the fine tuning uh this is just uh defining uh, what unsupervised and supervised training is uh just the unsupervised training was trained using uh, the clean data without uh, any labelings just to give it a uh, good uh, so it can learn it samharic can give simple amharic uh, as an output the supervised was uh, conducted uh using labeled data which is filtered with only ad so that it can uh, summarize and summarize or create an ad for us uh, so for the fine tuning, we took uh, we used the LoRa, the Q LoRa actually. Uh, we 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 thought that would be a better approach because it's actually a good it's actually a good method that uh, unifies uh, quantization and LoRa together to simply to explain it in simple terms. Uh, the quantization will shrink the huge model we have. Uh, that is uh, the, the mistral. Uh, so we, due to uh, computational resources, this is a very computational resource efficient uh, method because given our limited computational resources, this method is very uh, quite efficient because it quantization will shrink the model we have and the LoRa uh, will take small matrices from uh, from the quantized model and uh, take a uh, representations from that matrix and train it so that we can have uh, a trained model that is uh, shrinked and also uh, represented. Uh, yeah, it will have an effect on the general output given that it is not whole trained or as a whole trained, but this is one approach with uh, that, that we can take due to our cheaper GPU and smaller GPU that we have. Uh, so, in in uh, to figuratively explain this, the, the QLoRa, uh, if there are pass, uh, possible parameters, say we found that there are over three billion parameters on Mistral, and the trainable parameters for LoRa would reduce it to eighty-five uh, million. That is almost two percent. So uh, we train this two percent, also given the representations of this two percent. Uh, so uh, finally, after fine tuning, we will go over to the rack system. Uh, so the rack system will basically have, as explained uh, earlier, it will give us a specific ad uh, in Amharic. We give it a const or context on some uh, campaign or product information or brand info. Then that will uh, generate uh, a specific ad for us. So the workflow, uh, as uh, it's it's pretty it's, uh, it's depicted as uh, the following. These are the codes in steps. This is the data loading. Uh, this is the model uh, loading. Uh, we imported our model. Uh, this is the, to the tokenizer we used. And this is the PEFT uh, or the Q uh, trying to use the QLORA from the PEFT library from Hugging Face. Uh, and yeah, this is pretty much it. just to save time. This is also the, this is the trainer uh, code we used in the end. So our results uh, for the fine tuning, it was successful. And the end product was more or less good. It was a good attempt as our uh, first attempt. The model training might have been a little too overfitting though. Uh, yeah, overfitting to explain a little more about overfitting is when the validation loss goes up, which is bad, while the training loss goes down significantly. 
meaning the model is learning the training set really well, but it's unable to generate two new data points. Uh, this, in most cases, this is not something desired. Uh, my teammates will go over the, the in detail. I'm just giving an overview. So this is the data set we trained. This is our uh, screenshot taken from training the model. This was, this is our final front end. Uh, and uh, in conclusions, the project was very enticing and uh, it was also difficult. Uh, it was a new concept for most of us. Uh, and uh, I think we we had really good chance to work on it better, to learn on it better, and also to understand the perks of fine tuning. Uh, in addition, we also spent a lot of time on the data, to, trying to clean it and uh, work on it to make it better in the end. Uh, as a group team lead, I gained invaluable experience and work ethics. Uh, is that a question for me or? Am I audible? Am I still on? Yeah, yeah, you can. Uh, you are audible. Yeah, but uh, I mean, Brian, you raised your hand. Is that a question to Abraham? Okay, let me just. If I'm almost done. You can ask me um, when I'm done. Okay. Yeah, my question is: You said the generated output as uh, a better one. So, if there are some screenshots, or we can we can see the the differences, and then. I, I hope it, it will be better because in normal use cases, without even. I, I, I assume Brian, Daniel, Daniel is going to go over that. So just okay. maybe okay. let's yeah. wait. For, yeah. Okay. I, maybe I'm just going on, uh, yeah. on okay. the general so overview. Concrete, yeah. And then, yeah. I'm just going on the general overview. Uh, my teammates will proceed with the details they had uh, on the project. So. Uh, so uh, it was a good project as, as, as a team lead. Also, I gained valuable experience in work ethics, also copious knowledge on how to effectively lead a team. Uh, given more resource and time, I believe we'll be achieving more. Uh, the blockers uh, we had, and it's worth mentioning, I believe, uh, is we started, out, uh, we started out as a team of six and we finished as a team of three. Uh, also, we had uh, lost our data or work. Pro we had lost our work work progress in the almost in the day before we were to submit, and we started again with the whole project. And yeah, that is uh, the overall approach our team took. And I'm thankful for uh, my team's uh, efforts. And yeah, uh, Danny, Daniel, and Abraham can add on uh, what I've presented. Uh, thank you. Right. Yeah. So, uh, Daniel, you can proceed. I'm going to share your screen so that. Uh, okay. The one, yeah. Okay. First, uh, let me write, and uh, if it refuses, uh, you will just. Okay. Good. Okay. okay. I'm going to stop sharing. Great. Now it's 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 good. You can. Okay. We are seeing you. Uh, before, yeah. Okay. Before proceeding, uh, uh, what my colleague tried to say is the the fine tuning part in, involves two sections. The first one is training, and the second one is uh, the unsupervised. So, uh, as you can see it on my screen, uh, there is a training loss and the validation loss. As you can see it, the overall uh, in each, we define it in uh, hyperparameters. They are decreased. So uh, this one is the uh, evidence uh, to just it, test uh, the supervised uh, training part. You just start over. OK. You can see my screen now, right? Yeah, yeah, we can see your screen, Daniel. Okay, so uh, uh, my responsibility in this group was to just uh, uh, build the RAG pipeline and to do the semi supervised training part. And the first, the first one is the RAG part. Uh, before just uh, just starting the RAG part, I would like to just uh, explain you how. I just uh, think the project and from understanding there will be just a channel uh, a telegram channel group or uh, 
a groups or a channel. So uh, in that group, there is a conversations, which is which are in mostly in Amharic. So uh, those conversations are going to be our context. And the second, the those contexts are going to be retrieved by our retriever. So if we have uh, the context, we can just uh, generate the ad which are more targeted. And uh, let me just start from the rack part. Uh, the rack part uh, include first one is the, the retriever part, which is the main part of uh, the rack, the rack line. So uh, in order to start the project, I started by just uh, extracting a single channel. Uh, I don't remember which exactly is. And what I did is I tried to just extract the last 25% of the conversations in that uh, channel. So I can have the most recent and the most, uh, the most closer context uh, that I need. So uh, here, this module is going to do that, the job I would like to just do. And the second one is the semantic chunking part. The chunk, as you know, is, uh, is going to be retrieved when we want to just, if we just give the query or any, anything that we need uh the large language model to do we we need to just have a chunk. so there are many types of uh, chunking so we can chunk it uh, just randomly uh, or just within the sequence uh, what i did is uh, i tried to just chunk it using uh, vector similarity uh, i'm going to show it uh, how i did it so as you can see the sentence split part which is I used it using a regular expression. It will split each statement by just this one. You can see it. So it is going to be splitted. Then we will just embed them. Uh, since we started the project parallelly with the data pre-processing and the rag part, I didn't have the model that is going to be understand the Amharic perfectly. So what I did is I tried to use uh, the OpenAI embedder. So what uh, from after the, after the statements are embedded, they are going to, we we are going to just calculate the cosine similarity using the scikit learning uh, framework. After that, if the statements or uh, the those splitted statements uh, have the closer meaning, we are going to have. Uh, we, we can just have the more accurate uh, chunk. We want to just, uh, we want to ask a context for our retriever. The second one is involves the prompt part. The prompt here, the prompt template, uh, we are going to just, uh, what I said is the prompt is going to just instruct the model to generate the advertising and we i try to describe what the context and its meaning uh, i try to just it is a conversation from uh, a channel or a group and the first one is the first this article i try to explain it how it is going to just generate the advertising which is more appealing and more attractive and catchy uh, I don't just, I created only a single chain. Uh, mostly I used a long chain see, since it is more convenient in, and it, uh, increase, it decreases the time greatly. And after that, the as you can see, uh, the rack parts and the rack pipeline, is, I just stopped it, I stopped it here. And uh, as a placeholder, after uh, if our model is successfully run i am going to use the mistral model which is fine tuned and uh, what i did next is a semi supervised training part uh, i used the model which is cleaned by uh, i think nati and uh, i used only just uh, a values within the human label column which is which are not which are which are just which are values and i dropped all the non values in order to just find unit using supervised way and after that uh, 
as my just colleague explained it earlier, he mentioned that uh, we used the tokenizers, which is uh, trained by Gary Logistic, and uh, we tested it. Uh, it is good. Uh, we tested it using the more advertising, which we thought it is going to be the advertising content, and we give it and we com we compare it with the OpenAI model. It has uh, a large difference. So uh, rather than just training our own tokenizers, we can use the Gary Logistics one. And the the next part is loading the model. Uh, as you can see, the, the Mistral 7B version one instruction model. And the tokenization part, uh, I already told you that we used the Llama model. And after that, we instruct the model in order to how it understands the data and and we try to extract uh, instruct it using uh, the prompt and what we did is uh, the from the data which is cleaned by natnail uh, we have found i think 21 packs and we told it that there is a 21 tax tax and try to understand and try to predict uh, which one is uh, health pharma or telecom and uh, my friend already explained it what how what and uh, how we use uh, qlora and and its purpose uh, so uh, the second one is uh, the running the training part and uh, we just test if there is any gpu and after that we define these are the hyperparameters and there are a maximum of 1000 steps and we try to also minimize the learning rate uh, in order to meet the resource that we are given and then each steps have uh, 50 and we we saved those 50 steps uh, checkpoints and successfully the model able to just uh, predict and the, as you can see, the training loss started from 2.41 and the validation loss started from 1.3 uh, all the way down to just 0 0.23 and 0 0.35. Uh, so uh, this one is uh, my part. Thank you for listening. Yeah. If you have any questions. I mean, that is excellent, but still, I mean, this is good, and you know, from your training loss and validation loss, uh, loss, it's also good that you stopped exactly when the validation loss starts increasing. So that's correct. But is there anyone who has tried from your group this model to do something, like the trained model, for example, to predict, like as for example, group two did to predict at least whether it's an ad or not? Was it being tested? You know, has this model been tested? Uh, do we have another team member who could do, who would show us or? I don't think that uh, anyone had tried it uh, because uh, I trained it uh, at the last time uh, our instances were down. And I tried also to just train it using uh, the Google Cola, but it is just surpasses uh, just the resources that we need. Okay. And so uh, do you do you, do you want me to switch on your? Uh, I mean, of course that's not recommended. But if it's just there for tomorrow, okay. you can show us some sample. Like you know, you can sample test. Um, I think one of you just basically get a sample from your model uh, on how much you know. It seems it's good linearly going down, and so everything sounds like very nice. But now the one part is like how good is it uh, in doing either in, in doing the classification um it, without that knowing without estimating without testing it it's basically um we are unable to know how good it is just from the loss function it's good but do you could you do that like would you like to do that first okay so uh what it's just what a, was on my like, mind we, we give you like we give you a sample of ads um, okay. For example, group two can give you ads, and then you can sample okay. from your model. You know uh, how good it is classifying, because you are using okay. Mistral, so that's a good comparison. They have done in group two, 
uh, using a Gari uh, Lama 2 model. And they were saying that the, the actual the classification was not good. Now you seem to have another version that does exactly that. So it would be nice to compare how much your model classifies uh, you know, a message to add or not, or within add different categories. So would you be able to do that? Okay, so we can. Uh, how about just we just prepare it uh, by tomorrow? Since uh, we yeah, already. It's, just, not, it's uh, not today. It's not today. I, I'm saying for tomorrow. So, okay. okay yeah, so, write me, write me, uh, DM me so that I can activate your machine so that you can do the sample. And then maybe you can collaborate with group two so that group two can give you some samples where their model fails. Okay. 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 You can do that. Great. Yeah. Wonderful. So uh, maybe like uh, group two, please just reach out also um, to be able to just test how good is their model uh, with respect to, for example, the Gary model that you have trained. So great. Okay. Wonderful. Um, anyone else? Any question to anyone? Abraham? Yeah. Uh so uh, i'm also from group five and i'm okay. just yeah, going to can... give a simple yeah. update from my end proceed. proceed yeah okay all right so uh i'm not going to share my screen uh because i'm not in a um I'm, I'm, i have joined with my phone and uh, i'm just going to give you some highlights so i was the one uh, working on um, on the data side so i basically uh follow uh, the not niles uh, notebook uh to clean up the data so uh finally we found uh, around 46000 rows uh from the data and uh due to um uh, our or some resource issue we uh, you know it, we figure we assume it it might take us some time to uh, label the data manually so uh, one of our friend come up with some kind of idea you know to label the data using classifiers so we we kind of prepared uh, a sample data that would be fed to the classifiers and we were uh, testing on that. However, we didn't get luck on that and we uh, get back labeling the data manually. So after uh, after we completed uh, labeling the data, uh, we didn't get any relevant data from the TIGVA uh, data. However, from the uh, Yeni tube, we found around 600 uh, relevant data. So once uh, we completed, uh, once uh, we I completed cleaning the uh, preparing the data, uh, I move uh, to the unsupervised training, collaborating with my uh, team member Abraham, and uh, we were you know trying to create our own custom uh, tokenization using Tintas piece. And uh, we, we shared it uh, with Nati. Uh, we, we share our funding with Nati, and you know he suggests us to change our tokenizer, uh, which was Gary Logistic. And we were testing on the uh, uh, the unsupervised training. However, we had some issue regarding our, our instance, and we had to set up uh, the whole thing again. So till uh, my other uh, colleagues uh, set up the the, the models that, that we have set up before, I moved to the front end part and uh, de develop a simple UI uh, using React. And uh, yeah, this is mostly what I have contributed to the group. And uh, yeah, uh, one thing I would like to emphasize here is that you know. Uh, for, uh, if we were uh, basically a team of three, and uh, despite the uh, issue that we have encountered multiple times in in, in our instance, you know, uh, we finally uh, you know got something to contribute, and uh, I would like to thank uh, my colleague Abraham and Daniel. We put a lot of effort uh, for this, and uh, yeah, th that's it from my end. Yeah, no, excellent. I mean, I think it shows, I, I mean, to be, um, I can be very honest. I didn't expect much from group five, given that you were not logging as much in the early times, uh, the week before. And I'm very impressed to see in a very short amount of time that you were able to do this um, and have something to contribute. So definitely, I think, you know, the group dynamics almost always speaks 
And I think once you figure it out, maybe just like you have to be, you have to focus, you seem to figure it out uh, and, and do that. Again, also just that I don't understand what what it means you lost the data because the machine didn't just boot up. So it must have been maybe saved in a theme file, in a theme folder or something like that because in a way the machine didn't crash, right? So it must have been some, either somebody deleted it or, uh, and if the pod should also be almost always uh, Git versioned. So, yeah, Daniel. Uh, just uh, to add on this point, we only lost uh, the IPY NB files, uh, the notebooks, and uh, I tried to just drop it uh, on the Slack. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, you I mean you, you lost which one? Yeah, the uh, notebooks. Only the notebook part. Uh, yeah, but like where were you saving it? Most likely, because what I'm saying is that in principle, like the, the machine didn't crash and only restarted. So now it must have been in a temporary, uh, like in a temp folder. If it wasn't a temp folder, definitely would do that. But that's why I tried to check and your machine was okay. Like that means it continued. It was not new machine. It was just, uh, so the very only new machine, the, the only one that I created was, you remember like somebody from your team in group five deleted the entire home, which basically meant nobody could log in, including me. And at that time though, that was not the time that you claim, like that That was just earlier times where your machine was full. Um, but anyways, in the future, almost always before you quit, make sure to save when you are working on remote uh, so that you don't lose. But at, uh, as I said, well done. And tomorrow, hopefully you will be able to show us what comes out from your model or what is predicted from your model. And I would really encourage proactive communication between group two and group five so that you show us the comparison between Mistral, your train model, um, and the one that group two tried. Wonderful. Okay. Great. Um, and I know that we are over time, so let's just stop this one. Um, and so group five, group four, group six, and group one, please also just prepare uh, to show us what you have done tomorrow and tomorrow stand up. Okay. So, um, and you don't, you know, it doesn't mean that you have to work. Like it doesn't mean you have to work uh, until tomorrow, this one. I, I, you know, that project is finished. Only group five, just for sampling on, uh, I'm asking them just to, to test their model, but not, I mean, as I always say, start focusing on this week's project. You know, it's not about last week's project. Just only coordinate with your group so that it can present tomorrow. I hope that's clear. Okay, and let's stop uh, this one. And right there, just let's come back. The, I mean, I'm, I'm going to make it very short. The one uh, this week's the challenge walkthrough. 